Hello everyone and welcome back to Total Organic Chemistry. This video will be sort of a review on substitution and elimination reactions and how to choose between the four mechanisms we've studied so far, so SN1, SN2, E1, and E2 reactions. By the end of this video, hopefully the questions that you will be able to answer are when do substitution and elimination reactions compete and how can you tell? And also, how can you determine which reaction will occur given a certain situation? If you'd like some additional review on any of the nucleophilic substitution or elimination mechanisms that I will be going over in this video, please subscribe to my channel and take a look at some of the previous videos I've uploaded on all of those topics. When you're given a certain set of conditions and you're expected to determine which of these four reactions will occur, we have to take a look at two different things. The first of those is the identity of the haloalkane. So for this video, I'm going to split that into methyl haloalkanes, primary unbranched, primary branched, secondary, and finally tertiary haloalkanes. And remember that number tells us that for the carbon with the halogen on it, how many different carbon substituents does it have? The other thing we'll look at is the identity of the nucleophile. So I'll also split that into four different categories. The first of which is a poor nucleophile. So I'll be using water as an example for that. We also have good nucleophiles that are only weakly basic. So for this video, I'll be using the iodide anion. Strongly basic unhindered nucleophiles. So something like Hydroxide is a strong base, but it is not sterically hindered. And then finally, a strong base and sterically hindered base, so such as the T-butoxide anion. So let's start with the methyl haloalkanes and how they react with different types of nucleophiles. Well, we know that methyl haloalkanes are only going to undergo substitution reactions and not elimination reactions, because there are no adjacent carbons for us to pull off a hydrogen and form a double bond. There's only one carbon. And furthermore, we can only have SN2 reactions, not SN1 reactions, because that methyl carbocation is very, very unstable and it's not ever going to form. Finally, only strong nucleophiles are going to perform those SN2 reactions on a methyl haloalkane because that carbon halogen bond is going to be quite strong with a methyl center. Okay, so let's draw our four reactions here. We can have methyl bromide as our haloalkene reacting with water to maybe hypothetically form methanol, CH3OH. But like I said, only strong nucleophiles are going to react, and water is a weak nucleophile, so this reaction really isn't going to proceed. Then we'll have our strong nucleophile, but non basic, so methyl bromide reacting with sodium iodide. So iodide is our nucleophile, to form methyl iodide. And that reaction will proceed, and that's an SN2 reaction like we just said. Next, methyl bromide again, reacting with our nucleophile NaOH, so our unhindered, strongly basic nucleophile. And that actually will form methanol, CH3OH, in an SN2 fashion. And very similarly, Again, methyl bromide reacting with maybe potassium T-butoxide to form this methyl T-butyl ether. And that is also going to be an SN2 reaction. Next, we'll look at primary unbranched haloalkanes. And elimination is possible with these because we do have now an adjacent carbon to pull off a hydrogen and form an alkene. But again, we're only going to undergo the bimolecular reaction, so SN2 and E2, because that primary carbocation is very unstable again, just like the methyl one. And also, just like the methyl haloalkanes, only strong nucleophiles will really react to any appreciable extent with primary unbranched haloalkanes. So, our example for this one will be ethyl bromide. So, I'll draw that here. We'll say reacting with water again in the first reaction to form hypothetically ethanol, but just like the previous reaction, this really won't occur. Water is not a strong enough nucleophile to affect that change. 
We can have ethyl bromide reacting with sodium iodide to form ethyl iodide. And that reaction will occur. That's an SN2 process. Ethyl bromide reacting with sodium hydroxide. So again, our strongly basic unhindered nucleophile. And that will form ethanol in an SN2 reaction. And then we'll have ethyl bromide finally reacting with potassium t-butoxide again. And this will be slightly different. So because elimination is possible, and we have a very sterically hindered strong base acting as the nucleophile, this will actually undergo an E2 mechanism to form ethylene. So to make that double bond and kick off the bromine. Next, we'll look at primary branched haloalkanes. And elimination is more likely with these branched haloalkanes because of the steric hindrance. But again, we're only going to undergo bimolecular processes, so SN2 and E2 reactions, because just like we've said before, this primary carbocation is going to be pretty unstable. Again, only strong nucleophiles will really react with these primary branched haloalkanes. So that means that this haloalkane here, so this is a primary alkyl bromide, but we do have this branching methyl group here. So reacting with water to give the alcohol, this will not occur. Water is not strong enough. We have the same haloalkane reacting with, again, sodium iodide. This will give our iodide product in SN2 fashion. Next, again, our sodium hydroxide nucleophile. This will give us the elimination product. So this will give us our alkene here in an E2 mechanism. Because of this branching, the steric hindrance from that extra methyl branch is going to lead to more elimination than a primary unbranched haloalkene. And we will also get the same product if we react the same haloalkane with a sterically hindered base such as potassium t-butoxide, again an E2 mechanism. Next we have a secondary haloalkane. So elimination just gets more and more likely with the more steric hindrance, so elimination will be likely with secondary haloalkanes. And any of the four mechanisms we've talked about are in fact possible with a secondary haloalkane because of that relatively stable secondary carbocation. And this is also the first time where we get a, any sort of reaction with weak nucleophiles, although it will be a rather slow reaction compared to tertiary haloalkanes, which we'll look at in a second. So our model secondary haloalkane will be isopropyl bromide. We can react that with water, our weak nucleophile, and in this case we will get a mixture of isopropyl alcohol, so that's our SN1 product, and also the E1 product, which is propene here. So remember that anytime you have an SN1 process, the E1 process will always accompany it to some extent. We can react the same isopropyl bromide with sodium iodide again, and this will give us an SN2 product, isopropyl iodide. Reacting with sodium hydroxide, strongly basic, unhindered, will again, just like the previous one, give us an E2 product, so propene here. And same with the T-butoxide anion, that will also give us the E2 product, the alkene here. And finally, tertiary haloalkanes will very likely undergo elimination. And with tertiary haloalkanes, again, we cannot undergo an SN2 process because of all of that steric hindrance around the reactive carbon. So because of all those extra substituents, an SN2 reaction is really not going to occur, but all the other ones can. And one last note is that with tertiary alkyl halides, we can actually use weak or strong nucleophiles to very similar ends. So we can have our tert butyl bromide as a model tertiary haloalkane reacting with water will give us Again, a mixture, just like the secondary ones. We'll have tert-butyl alcohol as our SN1 product, and we'll have, again, this same alkene as our E1 product, which will, again, always accompany the SN1 process. 
terbutyl bromide reacting with sodium iodide will in fact also give us a mixture. So the same mixture, terbutyl iodide as the SN1 product and the alkene here as our E1 product. Because that tertiary carbocation is so stable, it will likely undergo the unimolecular process rather than anything else. However, with strong bases, so we can take the sodium hydroxide nucleophile, strong bases will very easily react in an elimination fashion, so E2 mechanism, to give us this same alkene. And very similarly, with t-butoxide anions, it will also undergo the E2 process to give the same product. Some last notes I want to talk about are that, remember, higher temperature usually favors elimination reactions over substitution reactions because of that entropic considerations we talked about in a previous video. So if you ever want to get more of an elimination product rather than a substitution, just heat that reaction up. And finally, the solvent that we've talked about before, remember that polar aprotic solvents favor SN2 reactions because they allow the nucleophile to really maintain its nucleophilicity. And conversely, polar protic solvents favor SN1 reactions, so they are able to really solvate the transition state and the leaving group, giving a faster unimolecular reaction. And although you could memorize every single combination of haloalkane and nucleophile that I just presented, please try to understand them from a mechanistic standpoint, so looking at the strength and basicity of the nucleophile, the structure and steric hindrance of the haloalkane and also of the nucleophile, and think about the properties of each of our SN1, SN2, E1, and E2 reactions and how those properties fit in with the properties of the haloalkane and those of the nucleophile. And that will help you understand these substitution and eliminations much more readily and much more thoroughly than you would just by memorizing all the different combinations. So hopefully this video has helped you figure out how to choose between each of these reactions. And thank you again for tuning in to Total Organic Chemistry. Again, please subscribe to my channel if you learned something or if you enjoyed this video. And also please consider donating to my Patreon page. I will link that below in the description. And that really helps me to continue creating these videos and more content for all of you.